All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lopagas show. I'm One Bar Lopagas. It is time to skull with the enemy. You all know the face in the middle. That is Dion. You guys have all been tuning in the NFC North Roundtable. Dion's confidence is high, and now we get the Vikings Lions. So we had to have him on. Dion, what is shaking? Man, I'm 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 very confident, as you stated. But that that's also that's reason for concern because usually that's not how the game goes when I'm super confident. But I'm confident, and uh, I'm I'm excited, man, because this this means so much. This game is so big, you know. So it's it's awesome that it just means so much that these are the two teams. Like I didn't think we'd be here, but we're here. And the fact that we beat Dallas, I think in a way, just brings so much more to this game. You know that we're playing for first place at this point. So I'm just super excited. Yeah, hundred percent. You guys didn't beat Dallas. You guys destroyed Dallas. Yeah, you made fun of Dallas. A lot of them. You <laughs> embarrassed Dallas. <laughs> um, I got quick coming off a game like that. Do you see that as a win for you? Or is like okay, we're a little too confident right now. Or like, how do you how do you take that? Just blowing them out of the water and then going to such an important game. Yeah, it's weird. Well, I mean, the Hutchinson thing in a way kind of made it feel like a loss because like I it was like after the game, it was like I I would have took the loss to know Hutchinson didn't get hurt. I would have took that all day long. So that made it feel like a loss. But at the same time, because it's Dallas, it feels different. Like if we if we blow out anybody else, it's like okay, now there could be a little hangover. You feel like, but you beat Dallas. No, <laughs> you know, it kind of felt like a high school game to be honest. I mean, it, you're just everybody's just joy. It's just a lot of joy that we spread across the world that day. So I think it was bigger than the Lions smacking Dallas. So I, I, I don't feel that because you beat Dallas. Spreading joy, across spreading the joy, world. Oh, destroying yes. Dallas. All right. So Lions, no doubt, very good team, both sides of the football. Uh, if there is one kryptonite to this team, what is it? Oh, that's good. I would say the well, outside of Aiden Hutchinson at this point, I would say the one. Man, I'd say that's tough. I would, I think the one kryptonite for the Lions in this one is what the run game is going to look like because usually we just kind of lean on that and we expect it to be there. But man, Harrison Phillips always scares me going into this game. I just think he's so good and I think he gets so kind of overlooked. And every time he plays us, I think he's always just such a big problem because he kind of clogs what we want to do offensively. So I would say that's the one kryptonite that I see is just like where does the run game actually get to in this one? Because similar to like when we play Tampa and we have to deal with Vita Vea, we kind of I feel like want to lean into we have to throw the ball a lot against Minnesota. And I expect that's going to be the the case in this one and I just think you guys personnel are better than what you were when we when we saw you guys last year and we were able to do that so for me I would say that's the that's the kryptonite is trying to find the run and it not being as just lean on the run as much as we want to do all right once again Dion links down in the description dude's got a huge channel 20 plus thousand just blowing it up over there uh give us a scoop on so first three games I think it was the first three whatever the first half of the season you're like all in one score games and all of a sudden yeah. these last two you've just like put up like like has something clicked did you play the right teams at the right time as far as matchups or like in the beginning of the season you're just off to a slow start like what's what's the big change yeah I mean I I try to look at it week by week because I feel like I thought you know LA was a little bit more healthy when we played them but that game I think that's how I expected it to go down when it happened the Arizona Cardinals game that one shouldn't have been that close that was on us like you said about clicking I mean it felt like the, the week one of the season we were just it was weird it was like we're at St. Brown people were concerned and it just we didn't we look like a team that didn't play in the preseason right like they didn't play our starters we were just off on the things that you expect the Lions to be good at and then kind of like to what you're saying I, th I think we hit two games that were really perfect for us to do what we did like you get a team that can't play the run at all you have a problem and that's I think where these games can start can get out of hand and I think that's kind of what happened with Seattle too is okay as they were statistically going into it they were banged up and they really couldn't play the run so we went and played a team that's great against the pass but you played so efficient and that's when the Lions I think blow out teams is when they could play that game you play a team like Tampa Bay and we try to kind of play a different game because of that it's harder for that to be the case so I think when you play teams that just can't stop the run at all the blowouts are possible and uh, overall I think defensively we've just kind of come together a little bit I mean we're we're so good against the run I feel like right now just because of personnel that when you have that and you get teams into that spot where they can't really lean on that at all in the game I think that's where the blowouts come into play so I think some of it was matchup but some of it was like week one we just didn't look like the Lions and we've gotten that kind of under wraps recently it appears so it appears you have you guys are humming right now let's go back to Aiden Hutchinson I mean I assume you guys are gonna make a trade at some point but until then how are you gonna fill those huge shoes of his man I don't think this is a great answer <laughs> definitely not a player I don't think there's a player that can um We'll be fine, like, I think everything outside of Hutchinson because we've kind of worked with it with Levi and Pascal, but, you know, there's no one coming in to help us this week. So, for me, I look at it as I think Aaron Glenn is, in a way, the great, the perfect defensive coordinator to deal with this because he wants to blitz anyway. So, I think for him, he's going to be like, well, just bring more bodies. I mean, we're going to bring more bodies. I want to play man anyways in the back end. So, I think 
his response is going to be, I got that defensive backroom that we invested in this offseason, as young as you guys are, it's time that you guys are going to have to carry a lot more of the weight here. Like, we're going to put a lot more on your plate, you're going to be a lot more one-on-one situations, and we're going to bring extra bodies to kind of make up for what Hutchinson is, because that's who he always is, that's who he was when we you know, didn't have the pass rush like it is right now. So I expect them to just lean into that. And the emphasis is going to be more so on how does the back end perform rather than how a guy like Isaac Ukwu replaces Aiden Hutchinson. Like he was fine, but he's not Aiden Hutchinson. He won't ever be Aiden Hutchinson. At least not this season. I don't know. Maybe he goes crazy during the offseason and he hits the weights or something. I don't know. But he's not going to be that guy. So the, it's it's about the back end in this game going crazy. And I, and I think going forward, that's going to be the expectation is those guys take on more of the responsibility. And what the trade? Do you think it's more like a Hassan Reddick kind of a player? Do you think you're going to try to swing big and get a Max Crosby? What, I mean, what do you think the Lions are going to do here? Yeah, I, I don't think they'll swing that big, to be honest. I don't, and I don't think they're – I'm not personally that big on Hassan Reddick, so I don't I don't think they'll go after Hassan Reddick. I think they'll go after uh, – I think the best way to describe it is like a B-tier type where it's – it feels like Marcus Davenport. Like I think they'll go get – if they can go get a Davenport type – and just be like, this guy is solid. He's a pressure piece. And then just accept the fact that, hey, we're not going to have Aiden Hutchinson. It is what it is. You know, I know there's reports out there like, hey, they're not going to want to, you know, mess up the future with anything. That they did. You know, they won't want to impact. Because I think for them, the concern is the contract. You know, they're not, they're still giving out extension. They just paid a Lee McNeil. I think it's more about the contract than the draft pick, which, which concerns them, is they don't want to have to pay somebody this massive contract going forward or have to take that on and then have him part of kind of this whole picture that you put together knowing that you're going to pay Hayden Hutchinson anyways. You go, you go bring in one of these big names, you're still paying Hutchison. Now you got to deal with both. And I just don't think that's a part of their timeline. So I think you'll get like a beer, B tier type where you're like, this is a solid piece that's just better than we know that he can start. It's not as much of a swing, but he's also not the big name. So I think you'll get something like that day three pick. Damn, Marcus Davenport, Viking, great. Uh, let's yeah, talk running know. backs. Yeah. Uh, so right now, it, <laughs> nobody knows if Aaron Jones is going to play or not. And it's going to be a huge blow if he doesn't. But just with this Lions defense, like if we if Aaron Jones doesn't play, Ty Chandler is probably going to be running back one, who's more the shift the fast home run type guy. What what what's a better matchup against this Lions defense? A, a kind of more of a bruiser like Aaron Jones is going to get those yards after the hit, or a guy like Ty Chandler? Yeah, I would say a guy like Ty Chandler. You know, well, like Aaron Jones is better. Like if you have Aaron Jones, you're you're in a better spot. So I don't want to like do that because I, that sounds crazy. But I think if you're playing the Lions, you want a guy that can make it a huge play because I just don't – I think the Lions' biggest strength right now, just personnel alone, is their two interior pieces on defense. You know exactly what Aleem is. Now he's happy. He just got paid. And you got DJ Reader. Like, that's not – that's not, I don't think, the world you want to live in. You want a guy that maybe is a little more boom and bust. Like, hey, it might not be great, but if he makes that one big play and he kind of shakes the game up because he's capable of that, that's the guy that I think – is the bigger threat in this one. Now, that being said, I would take Aaron Jones over Ty Chandler any day of the week for you and Minnesota Vikings, but I think if you're looking stylistically, you want the guy that can change the game a little bit by making a huge run play and not really living on, we're going to get four yards of carry because we're going at Reader and Ali McNeil, because I just don't expect that to be successful. Oh my God, we're going to win. I felt the same Well, I didn't say that. Okay, I, you think, know. I think you just <laughs> we ran between the lines. Game here. Uh, safe to say the Vikings are the best team the Lions have faced all season. Yeah, yeah, no, I'd say I was a hey, hold up. No, I'll, yeah, I think they're the best team we played for sure. Hey, it'd be crazy if I said they were. Look, man, I I did not think y'all were gonna be Houston, and then I'm and then you guys are smoking Houston like that. That's the one that threw me off. The other ones, they are. I mean, I'm not as big on Green Bay, but to see them just destroy Houston threw me off big time. That was the one I was like, oh, okay, no, this team is really darn good, and they're just they're so much of the same every week. You know what you're gonna get, and that's why they're so dangerous. So definitely the best team that we played this point this season, and I mean, even last year when you guys didn't have a quarterback, you were scoring thirty plus on us. Yeah. Like you, you guys were going crazy offensively. So that's always gonna be there with this team. So definitely the best team that we played. So you have to uh, predict into the future who's going to be the better head coach down the road, Ben Johnson or Glenn? Ooh, I, I, uh, but let me rephrase this. If you're oh, starting so a franchise yeah. who would I take? and you can pick what, who your head coach is, Aaron Glenn or Ben Johnson, GM Dion. Man, I, I think I think if I was starting a new franchise, I'd have to take Ben because I'd assume I'm drafting a quarterback. So I'd want to make sure that that's right. Because if I don't get the quarterback right, I think it's just always going to be a mess. That being said, though, I think Aaron Glenn's like the perfect head coach type. Like Ben Johnson, I think he's going to be good offensively. You expect that. But he's going to be relying on like what he brings in, I think, outside of it. But to me, Aaron Glenn is like Glenn is like built to be a head coach. He's wanted to be a head coach for a minute. I would hire that guy if I was looking for a head coach. I don't want, it, I don't want Ben Johnson to leave, so maybe it's a little bit of that. But I think he's he's a head coach type. Ben Johnson to me, though, like I would take him just because I got to make sure I get quarterback right. If I got a solid quarterback, I can roll with Glenn. But in most cases, I probably don't have that. So I got to take Ben. 
Makes sense. Makes sense. So Carlton Davis on the injury report this week. If he can't go, uh, who steps up? And oh, how big of a loss is this to Lions secondary? Man, it's bad. You know, you know what they call him. I, I didn't come up with it. They call him the Justin Jefferson stopper. That's what oh, people have called him. <laughs> I don't in think the past. Ever so, ever well, I think actually one bar came up with this. If I, so you know, it's just you don't have the you, if, you, if you don't have the Justin Jefferson stopper, the game's different. Um, if he can't go, it's 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 Ben Vildor that stepped in. So. Vildor, you kind of know what you're like. It's it's so it's going to be solid. He's not going to take the football away, but he's going to try to contest a lot of things. But as soon as you go to that route, it's okay. The safety's got to be over top of him pretty much every single play. So you're kind of just back into last year's mode. It feels like it's a massive loss if they don't have this guy because you're in last year's game plan essentially. I think with him, but if he's there, the Justin Jefferson stopper is there. The game's completely different. Wow. I, I tell, hey, I look, we we. <laughs> Come back. I might be wrong. I think he's going to have a heck of a game against Jefferson. I'm fired up to see it. Hey, look, Jefferson's going to get his. He's going to get some receptions. But I, I do like the uh, Carlton Davis's length is the biggest thing that we haven't had. We haven't had a guy that's like when you go to him, at least a couple of times, he might break up the pass, make a play on the football. That's what we lack if we don't have him out there as a guy that has the opportunity to, to make a play on the football. That's what he brings if he's on the field. So what's the line have to be for you to say Justin Jefferson will stop his line? Okay, just Jefferson's line. Like, what do I yeah. think he's going to do in this game? What's no, the success? He stops, like What's he, the success? success for the stopper. And, and, oh, and for the stopper. Okay. By the way, the Justin Jefferson well, stopper. He needs to work on that oh, nickname. What man. the? I, mean, I didn't. Again, I didn't come up with it. So I'm just, I'm just relaying the message. If, if I came up, it'd be fire. But you know, um, I think <laughs> successful. You know what? Uh, you know, I'll say the successful game for the stopper is let's just say as a whole, Justin Jefferson goes like eight receptions, ninety yards. I think it's successful on our end. Oh, I think well, that's. Yeah. I, yeah, because fair. like if you, I look at it like this, C.D. Lamb had like 230 against us last year, and he had like 90 in his last game. That was a win. I was like, all right, we'll take that. Just Jefferson's going to get a couple of those plays, but eight for 90. That's, that's I'll take that all day long. All right. So your your secondary, even with like with Davis there, I mean you, uh, Brian Branch, uh, you guys have stepped up your game. Terry and Arnold, you added him to the mix. Uh, what Kirby Joseph has he been behaving back there? Uh, <laughs> Is he going to be taking anybody out? Like, how, how's he been doing this year? Oh, boy. Uh, you know, hey, Kirby, man, he's – look, but here's the biggest thing about Kirby. Is he's he's taking on more responsibility this year, and I didn't I didn't know he'd become that, to be honest with you. I mean, we haven't had Melifon, and I thought coming in here, like, oh, if he's going to start. And then he's hurt, so I was like, okay, I guess it's going to be Kirby. But Kirby surprised me, to be honest. I, I didn't think Kirby would be able to put this much on his plate, like – him kind of playing the Brian Branch role week ago. It's like, he's not the same, but he can play man a little bit better than I thought he'd be able to. And he's playing the run. He's not having crazy hits. So Kirby Joseph's been awesome. He's actually taken huge steps forward without having Melifano. He's been one of the biggest surprises for me this year. I didn't know he'd be that well-rounded this fast. The safety room has been kind of shocking. I mean, you knew Branch was going to do well there because Branch is just a really good player. But what Kirby has been able to bring, and I think because when those two are healthy, Kirby is so natural. Like, it's so natural for him to just be like, hey, just roam in the back end. If you got Branch healthy, you can let him roam around, and that's where Kirby's at his best, how long he is and how much range he has in the back end. So now he's got the four interceptions. You put him with Branch, Kirby Joseph is at his best. We got we to gotta ask him about Jameson Williams. So we asked Micro yeah. Mike this yesterday in the live, and he was offended. <laughs> He was offended he by really the was. Yeah, like He didn't like it. <laughs> and we just threw out there, like, what, what's the feeling just so far was career? Like, has he shed the bust label? Because it was, and, and we know he's had injury issues. And when he's out there playing, I mean, we get it. He's a good player. But you look at where he was drafted in the production and the games played. Like, what, mm. what's, the, what's the feeling in Detroit about Williams? Yeah, James, it's weird, man. He's, he's weird because I feel like. I don't think what he's done statistically would say he's shed a bus label. I don't think he has. Not not if you if we're being honest, he's a first round pick. You expect more than that. That being said, though, I think for our offense, he's just so unique. And I haven't the Lions have never had this player with this regime. Like they haven't had a guy that's close to just this. I mean, just having him out there just changes everything. And so for me with JMO, it's like it's weird because if you take what he's done so far, he's probably a bust. That being said, though, he's definitely like become a legitimate part of this offense. Like, I mean, it looked like early, man, but goodness, he's just have one route tree. He's just going to run deep all the time. It's like now he's separating on different routes. Like he's actually a part of this offense and he's hard to take off the field at this point. So I think you're, he's going to continue to kind of be that guy that, like has some big games, some games you don't hear him as much. I just think that's how our offense is. We just don't throw the ball enough, ideally. And that's just kind of how we're St. Brown's going to always eat up the targets. So I wouldn't call him a bust for us. I think for other teams, he'd be considered a bust right now. But I think for us, it's actually perfect because we don't have anybody like Jameson. Like you take Jameson out of the mix, there's nobody like him. There's nobody with that threat. We don't have anybody else that can even come close to replacing that. And I think, you know, especially with how much we run the football, he's perfect for this team. We need this. So the vision's there. I get the vision, but uh, he's been good for us this year. I like what he's done this year. 
I see Dion's answer is what I was expecting here last night from Mike or Mike. <laughs> we heard something. Oh, hey, hey, what did Mike say? He said that <laughs> he's, he's a whole fan. He, he said he is. Uh, yeah, he got upset. Uh, oh. No, he didn't get upset. He said the, he said the ceiling for Williams is Tyreek Hill. Yeah. He said that's where he sees it going. Ooh. Okay. So hey, aspiration. It's good to have dreams, yeah, man. It is good to yeah. have dreams. I, yeah. I like the answer. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, All right. So uh, on the round table, you picked uh, you picked the Lions, and uh, I don't think you're going with your heart. I think you're going with your head on that one. And you had it. Oh, it's high scoring. I, I had twenty eight seventeen. Twenty. Okay, twenty eight seventeen. So Vikings lose by more than one score. Wah, wah. Uh, yeah. Do you think final final? Do you think at the end of the year? the North comes down to the Vikings and lions. Are you eating some of that Packers BS and or any of that no. Bears crap? Well, I've beat a little bit of the bears crap, unfortunately. Uh, not, not the Packers one though. That, the, I will never eat the Packers crap. They look, man, the, the Packers are, I don't think they're that good. I don't, it's weird. Cause I'm taking them this weekend. I just don't think they're that good. I think they're, they're good in the NFL, but they're not good for our division. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think they match up well with our division. And I think that's where their problem's going to, because that's what it is now. Like, no, it doesn't matter what you do outside division. You got to beat, beat each other at this point. This is how good it is. So I think the Bears are just tricky for everybody in here. That's why I just don't think they're going to go anywhere because they're going to make everybody's life difficult on offense. So I can't give up on the Bears. As of now, definitely things like it's going to be Vikings and Lions, but I, I'm going to stay consistent. I think it'll come down to Lions and Bears in the end. I, I still think that's how it's going to oh, end up. It's, it's offensive. Wow. I hate to, I hate to do it. Well, it's a lot of it's scheduled, though. In fairness, a lot of it's scheduled. The Bears' schedule is trash. <laughs> like, their <laughs> schedule is trash. They're, they're getting some easy ones in there. All right. There you have it. Dose of freaking Dion, man. Links down in the description. We appreciate it as always, man. I look forward to, I may or may not look forward to Roundtable next week. We'll see. Yeah. But uh, good, <laughs> oh, you good will luck be. on Sunday. Let's just hope for a good game, yeah. huh? Hell yeah. yeah, let's all have fun. That's that's what's important is having fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's what's important, man. Hey, I'm, I'm still holding out for that kicker jersey, though. You know what I mean? Like, I still right. want the Will, Will Riker thing to happen. You're that's in the mix, right. man. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely in the mix. mix. <laughs> all right, sweet, man. That's, that's what I'm here for. Okay, sweet. All right, man. Take care. Awesome. See you again.